Hare Krishna everyone. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books where we get an opportunity to associate with Srila Prabhupada every day by hearing his books straight without any comments in between. Well, sometimes a little something here and there, but mainly we're just reading from Prabhupada's purports for at least an hour. And uh, it gives us an opportunity to associate directly with Prabhupada and uh, as Prabhupada said when he was asked once what, what will happen when you die Srila Prabhupada immediately said I won't die I'll live forever in my books so welcome aboard all of you who haven't been here before and welcome back all of you who have, are, are coming back for again and again let's hear Sanatana Goswami's glorification of the Srimad Bhagavatam Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram from Sri Krishna Lila Stava, texts 412 through 416. And it goes like this Sarva Shastrabdipi Yusha, Sarva Vedaika Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja, Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada. O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds sarva bhagavata prana shrimad bhagavata prabho kalidvandurita aditya shri krishna parivartita o life heir of all the supreme lord's devotees o master shrimad bhagavatam you are the sun risen in the darkness of kali you are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna himself. Mareka bando mat sangin, mat guru man mahadana, man nishtasaka mat bhagya, mat ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu tadayin, atini chochatakara. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So here we are a Jamil has is in the process of leaving his body and the Yamadudas have come to get him because he was pretty sinful but the Vishnu Dudas show up because they heard the name of their master Narayana even though Ajamil was not intending to chant the name of Krishna or Narayana he was intending to chant the name of his son. Nevertheless, the, the Vishnu Dudas arrived, and now the Yama Dudas are confused because nobody's ever <coughs> interfered with their, with their execution of the, this duty. So now they're talking, the order, order carriers of Yamaraj are talking to the Vishnu Dudas, trying to understand who they are. Okay, chapter 1, 6th canto, chapter 1, text 34 through 36. <clears throat> the order carriers of Yamaraj said, Your eyes are just like the petals of lotus flowers. 
dressed in yellow silken garments, decorated with garlands of lotuses, and wearing very attractive helmets on your heads and earrings on your ears, you all appear fresh and youthful. Your four long arms are decorated with bows and quivers of arrows, and with swords, clubs, conch shells, discs, and lotus flowers. Your effulgence has dissipated the darkness of this place with extraordinary illumination. Now, sirs, why are you obstructing us? Purport. <clears throat> Before even being introduced to a foreigner, one becomes acquainted with him through his dress, bodily features, and behavior, and can thus understand his position. Therefore, when the Yamadutas saw the Vishnu Dutas for the first time, they were surprised. They said, By your bodily features you appear to be very exalted gentlemen, and you have such celestial power that you have dissipated the darkness of this material world with your own effulgences. Why then should you endeavor to stop us from executing our duty? It will be explained that the Yamadutas, the order carriers of Yamaraj, mistakenly considered Ajamil sinful. They did not know that although he was sinful throughout his entire life, he was purified by constantly chanting the holy name of Narayana. In other words, unless one is a Vaishnava, one cannot understand the activities of a Vaishnava. The dress and bodily features of the residents of Vaikuntha Loka are properly described in these verses. The residents of Vaikuntha, who are decorated with garlands and yellow silken garments, have four arms holding various weapons. Thus, they conspicuously resemble Lord Vishnu. They have the same bodily features as Narayana because they have attained the liberation of Sarupya, but they nevertheless act as servants. All the residents of Vaikuntha Loka know perfectly well that their master is Narayana or Krishna and that they are all his servants. They are all self-realized souls who are Nitya Mukta, everlastingly liberated. Although they could conceivably declare themselves Narayana or Vishnu, they never do so. They always remain Krishna conscious and serve the Lord faithfully. Such is the atmosphere of Vaikuntha Loka. Similarly, one who learns the faithful service of Lord Krishna through the Krishna consciousness movement will always remain in Vaikuntha Loka and have nothing to do with the material world. Text 37. <clears throat> Sugadev Goswami continued, Being thus addressed by the messengers of Yamaraj, the servants of Vasudev smiled and spoke the following words in voices as deep as the sound of rumbling clouds. Purport. The Yamadudas were surprised to see that the Vishnududas, although polite, were hindering the rule of Yamaraj. Similarly, the Vishnududas were also surprised that the Yamadudas, although claiming to be servants of Yamaraj, the supreme judge of religious principles, were unaware of the principles of religious action. Thus the Vishnududas smiled, thinking, what is this nonsense they are speaking? If they are actually servants of Yamaraj, they should know that a Jamil is not a suitable candidate for them to carry off. Text 38 The blessed messengers of Lord Vishnu, the Vishnu Dutas, said, If you are actually servants of Yamaraj, you must explain to us the meaning of religious principles and the symptoms of irreligion. Purport this inquiry by the Vishnudutas to the Yamadutas is most important. A servant must know the instructions of the Master. The servants of Yamaraj claim to be carrying out his orders, and therefore the Vishnudutas very intelligently ask them to explain the symptoms of religious and irreligious principles. A Vaishnava knows these principles perfectly well because he is well acquainted with the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
the Supreme Lord says, Sarvadharman Purichajya Mamekam Charanam Braja. Give up all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. Therefore, surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the actual principle of religion. Those who have surrendered to the principles of material nature instead of to Krishna are all impious, regardless of their material position. Unaware of the principles of religion, they do not surrender to Krishna, and therefore they are considered sinful rascals, the lowest of men, and fools bereft of all knowledge. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 7.15, Namam duskritino mudha prapadyante naradamaha mayaya parita jnana asuram bhavamashritaha those miscreants who are grossly foolish, lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me. One who has not surrendered to Krishna does not know the true principle of religion, otherwise he would have surrendered. The question posed by the Vishnu Dudas was very suitable. One who represents someone else must fully know that person's mission. The devotees in the Krishna consciousness movement must therefore be fully aware of the mission of Krishna and Lord Chaitanya. Otherwise, they will be considered foolish. All devotees, especially preachers, must know the philosophy of Krishna consciousness so as not to be embarrassed and insulted when they preach. Text 39 what is the process of punishing others? Who are the actual candidates for punishment? Are all karmis engaged in fruitive act activities punishable, or only some of them? Purport One who has the power to punish others should not punish everyone. There are innumerable living entities, the majority of whom are in the spiritual world and are nityamukta, everlastingly liberated. There is no question of judging these liberated living beings. Only a small fraction of the living entities, perhaps one-fourth, are in this material world. And the major portion of the living entities in the material world, eight million of the eight million four hundred thousand forms of life, are lower than human beings. They are not punishable, for under the laws of material nature, they are automatically evolving. Human beings who are advanced in consciousness are responsible, but not all of them are punishable. Those engaged in advanced pious activities are beyond punishment. Only those who engage in sinful activities are punishable. Therefore the Vishnu Dutas particularly inquired about who is punishable and why Yamaraj has been designated to discriminate between who is punishable and who is not. How is one to be judged? What is the basic principle of austerity, authority? These are the questions raised by the Vishnu Dutas. Text 40. The Yamadutas replied, that which is prescribed in the Vedas constitutes Dharma, the, religi the religious principles, and the opposite of that is irreligion. The Vedas are directly the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayana, and are self-born. This we have heard from Yamaraj. Purport The servants of Yamaraj replied quite properly. They did not manufacture principles of religion or irreligion. Instead, they explained what they had heard from the authority, Yamaraj. Mahajano Yenagata Sapanta one should follow the Mahajan, the authorized person. Yamaraj is one of twelve authorities. Therefore the servants of Yamaraj, the Yamadutas, replied with perfect clarity when they said, Shushuma, we have, we have heard. The members of modern civilization manufacture defective religious principles through speculative concoction. This is not Dharma. They do not know what is, what is Dharma, and what is adharma. 
Therefore, as stated in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, Dharma Projita Kaitavo Tra. Dharma is Dharma not supported by the Vedas is rejected from Srimad Bhagavata Dharma. Bhagavat Dharma comprises only that which is given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Bhagavad Dharma is Sarva Dharman Prichaja Mam Ekam Shadanam Braja. One must accept the authority of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and surrender to Him and whatever He says. That is Dharma. Arjuna, for example, thinking that violence was Adharma, was declining to fight. But Krishna urged him to fight. Arjuna abided by the orders of Krishna and therefore he is actually a dharmi because the order of Krishna is dharma. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 1515 Vidaish Chasarvaya Aham Eva Vedya The purpose of Veda, the real purpose of Veda, knowledge, is to know me. One who knows Krishna perfectly is liberated. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 4.9 Janma karma jame divyam evam yo veti tatpataha jaktva deham punarjanma naitimam etisorjana One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. One who understands Krishna and abides by his order is a candidate for returning home back to Godhead. It may be concluded that Dharma, religion, refers to that which is ordered in the Vedas, and Adharma, irreligion, refers to that which is not supported in the Vedas. Dharma is not actually manufactured by Narayana. As stated in the Vedas, Asya Mahato Bhutasya Nivashtitam Etadyad Rig Veda Iti. The injunctions of Dharma emanate from the breathing of Narayana, the Supreme Living Entity. Narayana exists eternally and breathes eternally, and therefore Dharma, the injunctions of Narayana, also exist eternally. Srila Madhvacharya, the original Acharya, for those who belong to the Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya says, Vidanam Patamo Bhakta Harir Eva Yato Bibuhu Ato Vishat Makad Veda It Yahur Vedavadinaha The transcendental words of the Vedas emanated from the mouth of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the Vedic principles should be understood to be Vaishnava principles because Vishnu is the origin of the Vedas. The Vedas contain nothing besides the instructions of Vishnu, and one who follows the Vedic principles is a Vaishnava. The Vaishnava is not a member of a manufactured community of this material world. A Vaishnava is a real knower of the Vedas, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Vedaish Shasaravaya Aham Eva Vedya Text 41 The supreme cause of all causes, Narayana, is situated in his own abode in the spiritual world. But nevertheless, he controls the entire cosmic manifestation according to the three modes of material nature, Sattvaguna, Rajaguna, and Tamaguna. In this way, all living entities are awarded different qualities different names, such as Brahmana, Chatri, and Vaisha, different duties, according to the Vanashram institution, and different forms. Thus, Narayana is the cause of the entire cosmic manifestation. <coughs> Purport The Vedas inform us, Natasya karyam kananam chabidyate, natat shamas chabyatikash chadrishyate, parasya shaktir, Vividaiva shuyate swa ba viki jnana bala kriya cha. Svetashvatar Upanishad 6 8. Narayana, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is almighty, omnipotent. He has multi multifarious 
energies and therefore he is able to remain in his own abode and without endeavor supervise and manipulate the entire cosmic manifestation through the interaction of the three modes of material nature sattva guna raja guna and tamaguna these interactions create different forms bodies activities and changes which all occur perfectly because the lord is perfect everything works as if he were directly supervising and taking part in it atheistic men however being covered by the three modes of material nature cannot see narayana to be supreme the supreme cause behind all activities as krishna says in bhagavad gita 7:13 tribir gunamayar bhavayar abik sarvamidam jagat mohitam na bijanati mam abhyak paramavyayam deluded by the three modes the whole world does not know me who am above the modes and inexhaustible because intelligent agnostics are mohita illusioned by the three modes of material nature they cannot understand that narayana krishna is the supreme cause of all activities as stated in the brahma sanghita 51 ishvara parama krishna sachidananda vigraha anadir adir gobinda sarva karana karanam krishna who is known as govinda is the supreme controller he has an eternal blissful spiritual body he is the origin of all he has no other origin for he is the prime cause of all causes mm. text 42 the sun <clears throat> fire sky air demigods moon evening day night directions water land and super soul himself all witness the activities of the living entity purport the members of some religious sects especially christians do not believe in the reactions of karma we once had a discussion with a learned christian professor who argued that although people are generally punished after the witnesses of their misdeeds are examined where are the misdeeds responsible for one's suffering and reactions of past karma to such a person the answer by the yama duties is given here a conditioned soul thinks that he is working stealthily and that no one can see his sinful activities but we can understand from shas from the shastras that there are many witnesses including the sun fire sky air moon demigods evening day night directions water land and the super soul himself who sits with the individual soul within his heart where is the dearth of witnesses the witnesses and the supreme is and the supreme lord both exist and therefore so many living entities are elevated to higher planetary systems or degraded to lower planetary systems including the hellish planets there are no discrepancies for everything is arranged perfectly by the management of the supreme god swabhaviki gyana bala kriya cha the witnesses mentioned in this verse are also mentioned in other vedic literatures aditya chandrao anilo nalas cha jaur bhumi apo ridiyam namas cha ahascha ratris cha ubicha sandye dharmo pi janati narasya vitam text 43 the candidates for punishment are those who are confirmed by these many witnesses to have deviated from their prescribed regulative duties everyone engaged in fruitive activities is suitable to be subjected to punishment according to his sinful acts text 44 oh inhabitant of vaikuntha you are sinless but those within this material world are all karmis whether acting piously or impiously both kinds of action are possible for them because they are contaminated by the three modes of nature and must act accordingly one who has accepted a material body cannot be inactive and sinful action is inevitable for one acting under the modes of material nature therefore all the living entities within this material world 
are punishable. Purport. The difference between human beings and non-human beings is that a human, human is supposed to act according to the direction of the Vedas. Unfortunately, men manufacture their own ways of acting without reference to the Vedas. Therefore, all of them commit sinful active actions and are punishable. Text 45. In proportion to the extent of one's religious or irreligious actions in this life, one must enjoy or suffer the corresponding reactions of his karma in the next. Purport. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 14.18, Urdhvam gachchanti satvasta madhye tishtanti rajasaha jaganya guna vritista ado gachchanti tamasaha those who act in the mode of goodness are promoted to higher planetary systems to become demigods. Those who act in an ordinary way and do not commit excessively sinful acts remain within this middle planetary system and those who perform abominable sinful actions must go down to hellish life. Text 46 O best of the demigods, we can see three different varieties of, varieties of life which are due to the contamination of the three modes of nature. The living entities are thus known as peaceful, restless, and foolish, as happy, unhappy, or in between, or as religious, irreligious, and semi-religious. We can deduce that in the next life these three, three kinds of material nature will similarly act. Purport The actions and reactions of the three modes of material nature are visible in this life. For example, some people are very happy, some are very distressed, and some are in mixed happiness and distress. This is a result of past association with the modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Since these varieties are visible in this life, we must assume that the living entities, according to their association with the different modes of material nature, will be happy, distressed, or between the two in their next lives also. Therefore, the best policy is to disassociate oneself from the three modes of material nature and be always transcendental to their contamination. This is possible only when one fully engages in the devotional service of the Lord, as Krishna confirms in Bhagavad Gita 14.26, Mam chayo bhyabicharena bhakti yogena sevate sagunan samati chaitan brahma bhuya yakalpate One who engages in full devotional service, who does not fall down under any circumstance, at once transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the spiritual platform. Unless one is fully absorbed in the service of the Lord, one is subject to the contamination of the three modes of material nature and must therefore suffer from distress or mixed happiness and distress. Text 47 Just as springtime in the present indicates the nature of springtimes in the past and future. So this life of happiness, distress, or a mixture of both gives evidence concerning the religious and irreligious activities of one's past and future lives. Purport Our past and future are not very difficult to understand, for time is under the contamination of the three modes of material nature. As soon as spring arrives, the usual exhibition of various types of fruits and flowers automatically become manifest. And therefore we may conclude that spring in the past was adorned with similar fruits and flowers and will also and will be also adorned in the future also. Our repetition of birth and death is taking place within time and according to the influence of the modes of nature we are receiving various types of bodies and being subjected to various conditions. Text 48 
Yamna omnipotent Yamaraj is as good as Lord Brahma, for while situated in his own abode or in everyone's heart like the Paramatma, he mentally observes the past activities of a living entity and thus understands how the living entity will, will act in future lives. Purport One should not consider Yamaraj an ordinary living being. He is as good as Lord Brahma. He has the complete cooperation of the Supreme Lord, who is situated in everyone's heart, and therefore, by the grace of the Supersoul, he can see the past, present, and future of a living being from within. The word Anumi Mangshete, an Anumi Mangshete, means that he can decide in consultation with the Supersoul. Anu means following. The actual decisions concerning the next lives of the living entities are made by the Supersoul and they are carried out by Yamaraj. Text 49 As a sleeping person acts according to the body manifested in his dreams and accepts it to be himself, so one identifies with his present body which he acquired because of his past religious or irreligious actions and is unable to know his past or future lives. Purport A man engages in sinful activities because he does not know what he did in his past life to get his present materially conditioned body which is subjected to the threefold miseries. As stated by Rishabhadev in Srimad Bhagavatam 554 Nunam Pramatak kurute bikarma. A human being who is mad after sense gratification does not hesitate to act sinfully. Yet indriya pritiya aprinoti. 6149 purport. He performed yad indriya pritiya aprinoti. He performs sinful actions simply for sense gratification. Nasadu manye, this is not good. Yata atmano yam asan apiklesha Because of such sinful actions, one receives another body in which to suffer as he is suffering in his present body because of his past sinful activities. It should be understood that a person who does not have a Vedic, it should be understood that a person who does not have Vedic knowledge always acts in ignorance of what he has done in the past, what he is doing at the present, and how he will suffer in the future. He is completely in darkness. Therefore the Vedic conjunction is tamasi ma, don't remain in darkness. Jyotirgama, try to go to the light. The light or illumination is Vedic knowledge, which one can understand when he is elevated to the mode of goodness or when he transcends the mode of goodness by engaging in devotional service to the spiritual master and the Supreme Lord. This is described in the Shvetashvatara Upanishad 6.23. Yasya Devi Param Bhaktir Yata Devi Tata Goro Tasyayate Katita Yarta Prakashante Mahatmanaha. Under those great souls who have implicit faith, in both the Lord and the spiritual master, all the imports of Vedic knowledge are automatically revealed. The Vedas enjoin, Tad bigyanartam sagurum eba bigach chet. One must approach a spiritual master who has full knowledge of the Vedas and be faithfully directed by him in order to become a devotee of the Lord. Then the knowledge of the Vedas will be revealed. When the Vedic knowledge is revealed, one need no longer remain in the darkness of material nature. According to his association with the material modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance, a living entity gets a particular type of body. The example of one who associates with the mode of goodness is a qualified Brahmana. Such a Brahmana knows past, present, and future because he consults the Vedic literature and sees through the eyes of Shastra, Shastra Chakshu. He can understand what his past life was 
why he is in the pre present body and how he can obtain liberation from the clutches of Maya and not accept another material body. This is all possible when one is situated in the mode of goodness. Generally, however, the living entities are engrossed in the modes of passion and ignorance. In any case, one receives an inferior or superior body at the discretion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Paramatma. As stated in the previous verse, Manasaiva Puri-deva Purva Rupam Pibhasyati Anumimshashite Purvam Manasa Bhagavan Ajaha Everything depends on Bhagavan or Aja, the unborn. Why doesn't one please Bhagavan to receive a better body? The answer is Agyas Tamasa, because of gross ignorance. One who is in complete darkness cannot know what his past life was or what his next life will be. He is simply interested in his present body. Even though he has a human body, a person in the mode of ignorance and interested only in his present body is like an animal. For an animal, being covered by ignorance, thinks that the ultimate goal of life and happiness is to eat as much as possible. <laughs> A human being must be educated to understand his past life and how he can endeavor for a better life in the future. There is even a book called Brigu Sangita which reveals information about one's past, present and future lives according to astrological calculations. Somehow or other, one must be enlightened about his past, present and future. One who is interested only in his present body and who tries to enjoy his senses to the fullest extent is understood to be engrossed in the mode of ignorance. His future is very, very dark. Indeed, the future is always dark for one who is grossly covered by ignorance. Especially in this age, human society is covered by the mode of ignorance and therefore everyone thinks his present body to be everything without consideration of the past or future. Text 50 Above the five senses of perception, the five working senses and the five objects of the senses is the mind which is the sixteenth element. Above the mind is the sixteenth element, the soul, the living being himself, who in cooperation with the other sixteen enjoys the material world alone. The living being enjoys three kinds of situations, namely happiness, distressful, and mixed. Happy, distressful, and mixed. Purport. Everyone engages in work with his hands, legs, and other senses just to achieve a certain goal according to his concocted ideas. One tries to enjoy the five objects, namely form, sound, taste, aroma, and touch, not knowing the actual goal of life, which is to satisfy the Supreme Lord. Because of disobeying the Supreme Lord, one is put into material conditions, and he then tries to improve his situation in a concocted way, not desiring to follow the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Nevertheless, the Supreme Lord is so kind that He comes Himself to instruct the bewildered living entity how to act obediently and then re gradually return home back to Godhead, where He can attain an eternal, peaceful life of bliss and knowledge. The living entity has a body which is a very complicated combination of the material elements. And with this body, he struggles alone, as indicated in this verse by the words, ekas tu. For example, if one is struggling in the ocean, he must swim through it alone. Although many other men in aquatics are swimming in the ocean, he must take care of himself, because no one else will help him. Therefore, this verse indicates that the seventeenth item, the soul, must work alone. Although he tries to create society, friendship, and love 
No one will be able to help him but Krishna, the Supreme Lord. Therefore, his only concern should be how to satisfy Krishna. This is what Krishna wants. Sarva Dharma, Paritjaja, Mame Kam, Shalanam, Vraja. People bewildered by material conditions try to be united, but although they strive for unity among men and nations, all their attempts are futile. Everyone must struggle alone for existence with the many elements. Oops. I just went way far up, I think. Are we on 50? Huh? We're on 50? Poor, poor? I just, somehow or other, I touched it in the wrong way. Uh, oh, everyone must struggle alone for existence? Is that it? Okay. Everyone must struggle alone for existence with the many elements of nature. Therefore, one's only hope, as Krishna advises, is to surrender to Him. For He can help one become free from the ocean of nations. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore prayed, Ayinanda tanujakin karam patitam mam vishame bhavam bodhau kripaya tavapada pankaja Stitaduli Sadrisham Pachintya. O Krishna, beloved son of Nanda Maharaj, I am your eternal servant, but somehow or other I have fallen into this ocean of nations, and although I am struggling very hard, there is no way I can save myself. If you kindly pick me up and fix me as one of the particles of dust at your lotus feet, that will save me. In a similar way, Bhakti Manoj Thakur is saying, Anadi, kram, anadi karama pali, pari babhara ne jale, tadi bari na deki upaya. My dear Lord, I cannot remember when I somehow or other fell into this ocean of nations, and now I can find no way to rescue myself. We should remember that everyone is responsible for his own life. If an individual becomes a pure devotee of Krishna, he is then delivered from the ocean of nations. Text 51 The subtle body is endowed with 16 parts, the five knowledge-acquiring senses, the five working senses, the five objects of sense gratification, and the mind. This subtle body is an effect of the three modes of material nature. It is composed of insurmountably strong desires and therefore it causes the living entity to transmigrate from one body to another in human life, animal life, and life as a demigod. When the living, when the living entity gets the body of a demigod, he is certainly very jubilant. When he gets a human body, he is always in lamentation. And when he gets the body of an animal, he is always afraid. In all conditions, however, he is actually miserable. His miserable condition is called sangsriti, or transmigration in material life. Purport. The sum and substance of material conditional life is explained in this verse. The living entity, the 17th element, is struggling alone, life after life, this struggle is called Sangstriti, or material conditional life. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said that the force of material nature is insurmountably strong. Daivi, Yesha, Gunamai, Mamamaya, Duratyaya. Material nature harasses the living entity in different bodies. But if the living entity surrenders to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he becomes free from this entanglement as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Mam Chayo Bhyabhicharena Bhakti Yogena Mam Eva Ye Prabhadyante Mayam Etam Tarantite Thus his life becomes successful. 52 The foolish embodied living entity, inept at controlling the senses and mind, is forced to act 
according to the influence of the modes of material nature, against his desires. He is like a silkworm that uses its own saliva to create a cocoon and then becomes trapped in it with no possibility of getting out. The living entity traps himself in a network of his own fruitive actions, activities, and then can find no way to release himself. Thus he is always bewildered, and repeatedly he dies. Purport has already, exp has already explained the influence of the modes of nature is very strong. The living entity entangled in different types of fruitive activity is like a silkworm trapped in a cocoon. Getting free is very difficult unless he is helped by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 53 Not a single living entity can remain unengaged even for a moment. One must act by his natural tendency according to the three modes of material nature because this natural tendency forcibly makes him work in a particular way. Purport One swabhava or natural tendency is the most important factor in action. One's natural tendency is to serve because the living entity is an eternal servant of God. The living entity wants to serve but because of his forgetfulness of his relationship with the Supreme Lord he serves under the modes of material nature and manufactures various modes of service such as socialism, humanitarianism, and altruism. However, one should be enlightened in the tenets of Bhagavad Gita and accept the instruction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead that one give up all natural tendencies for material service under different names and take to the service of a Lord. One's original natural tendency is to act in Krishna consciousness because one's real nature is spiritual. The duty of a human being is to understand that since he is essentially spirit, he must abide by the spiritual tendency and not be carried away by material tendencies. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is therefore sung, Mitche Mayara Bhashe Yachcha Beshe my dear brothers, you are being carried away by the waves of material energy and are suffering in many miserable conditions. Sometimes you are drowning in the waves of material nature and sometimes you are tossed like a swimmer struggling in the ocean. As confirmed by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, the tendency to be battered by the waves of maya can be changed to one's original natural tendency, which is spiritual, when the living entity comes to understand that he is eternally Krishna Das, a servant of God, Krishna. Jiv Krishna Das, e Vishwas, Karle Tara Dukanai. Instead of serving Maya under different names, one turns his servant's service attitude toward the Supreme Lord. He is then safe, and there is no more difficulty. If one returns to his original natural tendency in the human form of life by understanding the perfect knowledge given by Krishna himself in the Vedic literature, one's life is successful. ta -da. Okay, we'll stop there. It's 5.30. We'll start again tomorrow in text 54. Okay, it's the hot mic, I mean the uh, open mic <laughs> time. Okay, I, I have a reflection, do you mind? My reflection is that when we hear a whole bunch of verses all together explaining you what a miserable condition we're in. <laughs> the tendency is to get a little bit, oh, 
oh, oh, oh, oh, oh. But the fact is that before we heard the Bhagavad Gita, we didn't have any idea. And therefore, if we are in the right consciousness, then we hear these things, we'll go, oh, 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 great, thank you. Now I know what to do, not to be in ignorance. Thank you, Krishna. Okay, that's my thought for the day. My rec Go ahead. My reflection. Someone else? Oh, all right. They're, ch they're chicken. I was just thinking. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. No, go ahead. The angel. <laughs> I'm a rascal. Um, Far from it. I was just thinking as we were reading, and also a little bit earlier today, that this doesn't really have much to do with what we read, but I was just thinking that devotees are really not ordinary. And I was also thinking, while we were reading, that if I ever go back to Godhead, it'll be because I'm around them. That's a very, very profound and wonderful realization. Thank you. I have nothing to say about that. You said it all. If we just stay in the company of devotees. And who are devotees? Devotees are those who like to chant and hear about Krishna and, the, and real knowledge. They don't like to stay in ignorance. Nice. Thank you. What else? Yes, uh, yes. Kalp, we're just waiting for you, Kalpaturu. The cup, the cup of riksha. Uh, just maybe, um, Maharaj, you can explain or further describe. One place earlier we read that soul alone is the enjoyer in this world. Even though, you know, senses and mind and intelligence, they are... Well, what it's saying is that the soul is alone in this world because, you know, we, because we're thinking with the body, but at the same time we want love. We want to. We need to give love. We we need to get love. And therefore, we're always getting together with others, in some form or another, to get love and give love. But the nature of that exchange here in the material world is temporary. It's not real love. It looks like it's real love. And that, does, that doesn't mean that there isn't some affection. There is natural affection. But it's not real love. Because real love with another f f form, another person, another activity, another place, is eternal. So while we're in the material world, we just are, we're, we're being washed from one material body to another and where's my mother from last life and life before that and where are my friends Prabhupada said at the end of his life when he was not the end of his life when he was in sannyas he wrote this poem and he said where are my friends and family and relatives and business associates they're simply a list of names <laughs> simply a list of names <laughs> And at that point, most of them have passed away also. <laughs> and so in, in the end of the day, when you have to leave your body, it's just you. You, know, you, you may be surrounded by relatives or surrounded by others. They're going, oh, sorry, oh, no, no, no. And then you, but you're just going, bye, and you, you're off. Of course, it's, I don't mean to make it light. It's not a light thing. It's very heavy to leave the body. It's very difficult because we're so attached to it. But that's a fact. It, it, Prabhupada said, that while an airplane is on the ground, then they can fix it, they can oil it, they can clean it, they can make sure everything's working properly. But when it's in the air, if something starts to go wrong, that's it. 
You can be in another plane looking over at it, and all you can do is watch it go down. And that's happening more and more lately. I booked my tickets this day, so I was meditating on that. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that's the point. We're 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 in it. We're like flying an airplane, and the airplane is destined to die, and therefore we're just alone, and we know it until we meet devotees. Just like she said, until we meet devotees, and then we no longer feel alone. Because Krishna's in the center around whenever we're with devotees, Krishna's always in the center. And therefore, we're always preparing ourselves for going back to Godhead. And we are back to Godhead as long as we're serving. The service is eternal, Krishna's eternal, the devotees are eternal. Yes, Sarva. One of the reports mentions that a, a Christian professor asked Prabhupada, he doubted, he said, it doesn't seem like they're witnesses to our act activities, our sinful activities. But it's, I, I might be wrong, but I thought that Christians believe that if people act sinfully, they'll get a reaction also. So, I don't quite understand what the point of the Christian professor was. Yeah, he was pointing out that the Christian professor really didn't understand Christianity. You know who that was? It was in Scottish church colleges. Oh. Yeah. Professor Urquhart. And he was explaining that, you know, how, the, how can the law, law of karma be true? Because, you know, in a court of law, you know, they 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 get witnesses and then they prove what's wrong and then they make the punishment. But you know, there's no witnesses for your last life, or because he he was trying to disprove the law of karma from the previous life. So that's where he, what he talks about. There would be judicial standpoint. Huh? Through like a. Another, through like a judicial standpoint, he was trying to prove it through. From what no, he no, he was saying there isn't any. Therefore, there isn't okay. any love karma. Then, when you, then therefore, then when we died, is it finished? And why should why should you worry about what's going on now? You know, from what happened in the past, because there's no witnesses. You're not you're not going to be judged. So just eat, drink, and be merry. That was his philosophy, and therefore, Prabhupada said so-called, well he didn't say so-called, but Christ, Christian professor. Because most people who are claiming to be Christians or Hindus or, or Muslims for that, for any, any, they're not really following. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to be, you know, like a great scholar to figure that one out. Just walk around, open your eyes. Rati has a question. Hey Rati, Hare Krishna. Actually, it's a reflection. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. A small reflection. I was noting that Srila Prabhupada today was unusually strong in his emphasis that only Krishna can help the conditioned soul, nobody else. That helped me to get a millimeter more inclined towards turning to Krishna. Yes. That's what I was saying in the beginning. That, you know, when you understand, when you actually accept Krishna and inside yourself when you actually accept the instructions of Krishna and you have even a little faith there's a verse in the Bhagavatam that says if you just have a little fragrance of faith Krishna appreciates it and from inside he gives he's the witness he's the ultimate witness and he gives accordingly knowledge and relief and understanding and Yeah, that's what I was saying in the beginning. I was saying, I, when I was hearing these things, I was thinking, oh, 
why what a relief that I know that this is what's going on because before I was just bat being battered around one place another one going to one place another person another this that activity battered around and I'd come out of it reeling and I no, no, nothing seemed to work <laughs> but and I didn't know I didn't have any idea but now I know by hearing from Krishna constantly every day every day not only do I know but I can remember we, we shouldn't be ever we should never be depressed or discouraged because I can't meditate or I can't remember very much none of us can in this Kali Yuga it's so strong the ignorance and time but while we're hearing while we're actually hearing if we're hearing it's the same as meditation it's the same as realizing Krishna that's why I'm aspiring to do it 24-7 I know it's not practical we have to do other things to keep ourselves together but more we can do this and if we do this every day like we're realizing together our little spiritual family here you know Bhagavatam family so nice I'd like to announce that I had the nicest reading ever this morning 44 pages which by the way could you hand me the you know I'm using when I say page numbers I'm using this new file that we have it's right there third third from the left third from the left there you are that's it yeah we started today on text uh, uh, 180 I think it was 182 yeah we started at 182 and we ended on 266 84 verses Huh? It's all-time high. Well, not all time, but almost. <laughs> and it would that that's actually you know forty forty fifty four. Forty six pages. Is it? No, that's not right. I made a mistake. <laughs> I've got to check this. I can check it real quick. It won't take me but a second. Oh yeah, because I went to the I went to the next chapter. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. We went to the second chapter, and we went to eighty-two in the second chapter. Sorry. Memory, see? Without without this, you can't. Without this, you can't remember anything. Okay, we just we started out at one eighty two. Is that possible? <laughs> we went to eighty two. Yes, it is possible. Went to 82. Chapter 2, 82. Sorry, I'm wasting everybody's time here. I'm just, I'm, I'm relishing and I'm sharing. I'm just show, show and tell. Show and tell. Yeah, 182, or 82. That's not right. Oh. -ho. Yeah, it was 265. So we went, yeah, 70, 
four pages. That is something else. Seventy-four pages we did today. That's an all-time high. Yeah, yeah, it was. We did sixty-eight once, towards the beginning of one of the chapters in Jerusalem. And um, the verses were. I mean, I can't read it the way I was on the. I was on a roll. You can ask Wade to do it if you want. It was amazing. Just I was on a roll, and I was just flowing. I make, wasn't making any mistakes, and it was just flowing out of me. This it was Lord Chaitanya, because this is a summary of the uh, a, a synopsis of the uh, Madhya and Anjalilas in the beginning of the Madhya Lila. There's a synopsis, so just short. But then when he got to the Antilila synopsis, he talked about Lord Chaitanya and his ecstasies, and boy. Anyway, just to let you know, you got something to look forward to when, when, these, big, when these audiobooks come out. If by chance such a moment comes when I can once again see Krishna, then I shall worship those seconds, moments, and hours with flower garlands and pulp of sandalwood and decorate them with all kinds of jewels and ornaments. And it just went on. I can't go on that. But I'm getting carried away. I'm getting carried away. Hare Krishna. Yes. Rati said, could I, uh, could I please ask a question unrelated to the reading of today? Go ahead. In my work, I meet clients that have regular occurring panic attacks. How can we understand this phenomenon through a Krishna conscious perspective? What occurs during or what causes a panic attack? Is there anything you would advise me to tell them or should I just direct them to a psychiatrist? Psychiatrist. Because it's, it's, it's pure ignorance. When someone's purely ignorant, they're just confused. Sometimes you look at animals. They're, it says, it said in, in one of the verses we read, in the animals they're always afraid. Mm -hmm. And the humans are agitated. The, the, the demigods are thinking they're happy. And the animals are always afraid. So a panic attack of, of a person in a human body means that they are, they haven't achieved the human form of life or they're losing the human form of life. And therefore they have no idea what's going on. That's what the panic attack is about. They don't know. You look in the animal's eyes, they're, they're panicked. Even they're doing, they're doing some flying nicely. They land and they're, they're looking around, you know, like terrified. Cat, you know, go to the cat, and then it runs away, you know. I was, when I was going, I saw a possum. Yeah, I saw a possum the other day. We were going, coming, I think I was coming out of Goris. Yeah, I was coming out. There was a possum. They looked at me and he went, oh. <laughs> he ran, you know. Panic attack. The only thing you can do is to give them prasadam. The only thing you can do is give them prasadam. Give them something that they can, that they can, you know, something different. Whoa, you know. They're in the human body, so if they give them prasadam and it's nicely prepared, they can taste the difference. Chant. Of course, like you're in, she's, she's a professional. She's actually working with, uh, you know, t t social welfare. She's doing social work, helping people. Some of the people are very, very, not very well off, very disturbed people. Anyway, Rati, here's what I have to say about that. Uh, because of who you are and because of what you're doing, you put off an aura. 
that will help them, whether they know it or not. By giving them your, your, your association, uh, even though they may not be able to take advantage of it right now, the soul uh, gets Agyatu Sukriti. Huh? What does that mean? Agyata Sukriti. Sukriti means benefit, and uh, Agyata means without knowledge. Mm. They get knowledge without, they get, be, they get helped without their knowledge. And it, it builds up enough, and then next life or sometime in the future, even in this life sometimes, then they can begin to question and then begin to hear and begin to get the relief that we're getting from understanding. But, but I understand another thing, because I know you, uh, is that because of your compassion, your nature is very compassionate, and therefore it must give you a lot of distress when you see people suffering so much. All I can say is, uh, we're, at war, we're, at war, we're at war with Maya, and Prabhupada told us when you're at war, there will be casualties, and you cannot avoid it. <coughs> Just like a, when a person's a medic, you know, on the battlefield, and there's all these, you know, wounded soldiers, they have to take, they have to take the heavy decision of who to go to first. And they go to first the ones who are savable. And the ones who aren't savable, they have to let go. They can't. They only have so much time and so much, you know, uh, ability. So all I can say is you have to do the best of your ability. And you are doing the best of your ability. Because you're going out and chanting practically every weekend. And you know you're you're wishing me de deities and hearing and chanting and you're there every night to listen, even though it's late. This right now, I want you to know, it is now uh, one o'clock in the morning for her. Wow! Every night. Every night. Without fail. Without fail. And she's fully engaged. There. Yeah. yeah. So everybody, anyway, we, we just took a vote, and, when, and everybody's nodding their head and smiling <laughs> and saying, Rati, we're glad we know you. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> and those people, are those people who are, they may, they may be not very well off, but they're getting some benefit just by being with you. Sadhu, sadhu. Yes, Sarva. Yeah. Sometimes it's, I've seen animals in Vrindavan that seem to be like ordinary animals, but some animals are very unusual, like a dog may just go lie on the street very casually and relax, and cars will go around it. And some, You were saying how the animals are afraid, but sometimes animals in Vrindavan not too. sometimes animals in Vrindavan are not <laughs> ordinary animals <laughs> you can't take a birth in Vrindavan whether you're an animal or not it's a, a special birth yeah. Prabhupada said you know the yogis and so called swamis and these people who go there and then they do sinful activities there it's not very good but they take birth as an animal and then they take the next life they go back I mean, that's not, that's not a, a, every single case, but that's a general principle. It's a different situation. Yeah, it, it, the really sinful ones, monkeys, sometimes they take them out of Vrindavan, <laughs> so they don't, they don't get the chance to leave <laughs> in Vrindavan. That's really difficult. <coughs> But it's true, you know. You know, in general, they act the same. The chipmunks run around and up the trees and here and there and everywhere and chirp, chirp to each other and look for their mate and all these things. 
sometimes in Govardhan we see these monkey tribes, you know, big tribes, and there's a big monkey, you know, like this big guy, he's like the, look, you know, in charge of the rest of them, you know. And they see another tribe, and sometimes they, you know, they come together in the wrong place, and they start to fight like anything. And you'll hear these screeches, and you'll see one monkey, you know, like riding the back of another, just <laughs> oh, chomping down, you know, and they're just bleeding and running and screaming. And it's like having siblings. Huh? It's like having siblings. Yeah. So you know, and you know, and, and Shriji Shri, Shri in the in the Shulji, jewelry shop in Vrindavan in Shriji, he got pushed off of off the roof by a monkey. Oh. Yeah, permanently damaged. Then oh. nasty. Crazy. Hmm. So they're not all like you know, sitting in the street. You know, like you know, <laughs> you know. Maybe sometimes they look like. I mean, they even even in the West, you see dogs sometimes like that. They like they have their palms crossed. And just <laughs> <like that. laughs> <laughs> in the place where I stay in Delhi, it's a, one of these enclaves, you know, and uh, there's this, and it's like these enclaves have a lot of little small gullies and places all over them, and there's this one dog, that this this part is his, it's hers, I think, Here, I can't remember where it's her and him, but it's hers, and they sit there, you know, look and just oversee the whole thing, you know. <laughs> They're going over here to see what's over there, and then they go over here to see what. It's like they're like they're thinking they're in charge of it, you know. It's like <laughs> okay, we'll wind up today at six o'clock. Time to go. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai, the Vishnu Dutas ki jai, Yama Dutas ki jai. Gop Premanandi, Hari Hari Bol. Thanks everyone. See you tomorrow at six thirty, same time, same station. Every day for the rest of my life. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.